Hey guys, today we are going to be getting in the water and talking about coral restoration efforts here on the east end of St. Croix in the U.S. Virgin Islands. My name's Jeff. I've got a degree in oceanography. I've been a dive instructor for almost 30 years and just love being beneath the waves. Um, and today we are going to go out there and talk about coral restoration and the efforts here at the East End Marine Park. So uh, stick with us through the end of the video because it's going to be a really good one. little history here on the East End Marine Park. It was actually formed in 2003. Uh, there were several areas that were identified as areas of concern. So there's the beachfront here, there's the seagrass beds out here, and the barrier reef as well as some patch reef formations. Uh, and those were all brought together to form the East End Marine Park. The, the park is really extended from the North Shore around the East Point here on the island and then goes down to the South Side. So it's a nice big preserve. There's several areas uh, that you can do recreational activity in, but for the most part, it's protected from things like fishing, spear fishing. Uh, even the beaches are protected because there's a lot of turtle, uh, turtle nesting going on there as well. Uh, but in addition to the protection, the East End Marine Park has partnered with the Nature Conservancy. So, uh, and what they're doing is some coral reef restoration. And that's what really brings us here today. So we're going to be getting in the water with Matt, his wife Pardis, my wife Sarah, and our son Evan. Uh, so we've got a good team uh, to get in the water. And we've got all of our underwater uh, communication equipment with us today. So we're going to narrate this dive for you from beneath the surface of the waves so that you can experience it firsthand and learn about what's going on here at the East End Marine Park but in general, why coral reef uh, restoration is so important. Gosh, it is uh, blistering warm out here today, and uh, I'm, I'm going to get going. I want to jump in the water. It looks absolutely stunning, but I think first we're going to catch up with Matt, who's going to teach us and tell us a little bit about what we need to do to uh, clean the algae off some of these artificial structures that are growing the corals because the algae competes with the corals for nutrients and for resources. So. Uh, Gosh, I'm getting in the water. Let's uh, let's go catch up with Matt. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the, you just want to be careful around the corals themselves um, okay. because you want to clean close to the leading edge of the coral because obviously what we're trying to do is remove any algae or other things that are growing that are going to compete with the coral. Okay. However, you don't want to scrub the coral itself right. and injure it and perhaps that part will die back a little bit so it's like you, so we have these smaller looks like a very unpleasant toothbrush right <laughs> uh, these little wire brushes that you can sort of use to clean around the the edge important to note though as I said it, it had been a, a few months because of the mm -hmm. coronavirus thing since it was clean so right. uh, there is going to be some stuff that won't come off okay. without you know you, it, it's just not worth the time to, to mm -hmm. scrub and scrub and scrub and scrub. So don't kill yourself scrubbing. We're just right. trying to get as much off as we can. And what I usually do is just start at the bottom of the PVC pole. So you got like a, you know, just a PVC, a table made out of PVC pipe. And I usually just start at the bottom, work my way up the legs, and then you sort of go like a crisscross pattern with the PVC pipes on top, okay. um, and then work your way onto there, and then move on to these little brushes for the little nooks and crannies around the car. Of opportunity. They 
broke off on the reef naturally and were collected and then affixed to the top of the table here. The corals were chosen because they're reef building corals such as the brain corals and the Elkhorn corals. Coral restoration is important for a number of reasons. First, the corals form the basis of the majority of the food web by providing protection for smaller fish as well as juvenile reef fish. They also provide a large habitat for the much bigger fish above. The reefs protect our shorelines from erosion and can also minimize the impact that storms have on the waterfront. In the Caribbean, there have been seven species of coral identified as threatened. Most of these are stony corals, the reef building corals. Not the soft corals we see kind of flowing back and forth in the currents and the surge, but the hard corals that form structures by creating a calcium carbonate skeleton. It's these structures that create communities and large ecosystems of fish and sea life. This is the main reason why the focus for restoration is on these types of corals. Brain coral and boulder coral are two types of stony coral that are also more resistant to storm damage just due to their rounded shape. The staghorn and elkhorn corals are easy to grow as well because they grow more quickly than other corals. However, due to their outstretched structure, they're more prone to storm damage. While we're down here, Matt is also going to inspect the structures for any damage and make any repairs if needed. He's also going to document everything as it happens. The real trick is to get in the areas near the coral without damaging the coral. I'm just going to stay focused here on what I'm doing. Got to get right in there. So the next step in the process is called outplanting. It's where the coral is taken from the table once it reaches a larger size and it's placed out on the reef. It's secured to the bottom with epoxy in the hope that it'll grow in that new location and help contribute to the reef building of the ecosystem. Similar to this elkhorn coral here, the hope is that it grows strong and healthy. So we've been down here about an hour now, but we've been able to clean up the tables. They're looking much better. Matt's documented everything. We've also checked on some of the other coral that's been outplanted already, and things are looking pretty good. So we're going to head back in and get out on the beach at Kramer's Park. But stick with us through the end of the video, because next we're going to sit down with Matt, really get his expert opinion and thoughts on coral restoration out here and reef ecology. All right, let's head back. All right. Matt, <laughs> thanks for diving with us today and for showing us the reef out here at the East End Marine Park and what you're doing from a coral restoration standpoint. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you for joining us. It's nice to have the extra pair of hands to help out. <laughs> Always happy to help. Feel free to give us a call anytime. But what uh, what's your mission out here at the East End Marine Park with coral restoration? What are you, what are you, what are you after? So, uh, I mean... As I'm sure you know, you know, uh, coral reefs across the world are unfortunately in, in decline uh, through multiple multiple threats, of which the, the chief one would be uh, climate change, 
uh, and ocean, ocean acidification. So uh, with the coral restoration what we're trying to do is uh, sort of maintain the coral cover on the reefs. Okay. Um, maintain that coral cover so that um, we can keep the sort of resilience of the reefs versus all of those stresses on the reef, whether that be, um, I mean, parts of the marine park are no-take areas, so there's no fishing allowed. Right. Um, but it, outside of the marine park, that is a threat to coral reefs overfishing. Um, as I'm sure you perhaps know, um, a lot of fish are very important to the um, the functioning of coral reefs. Right. Particularly parrotfish, which keep the keep the algae, which we just scrubbed all off that. Right. <laughs> lots of algae, lots of growth. Yes, sure. yeah, yeah. So the parrotfish would usually be keeping all of that at bay with a little bit of help. And, yeah. Um, Parrotfish are real important for keeping the uh, the algae at bay. So mm -hmm. they're herbivorous fish, and uh, the algae competes with the coral for space uh, on the reef. It can sort of shade the coral so it doesn't get as much light to grow. Um, but it can also, uh, on a sort of smaller scale, produce chemicals which that can actually like push the coral out of its area. So okay. uh, when you lose your your herbivores from the reef you tend to have a slow shift towards a more algal dominated uh, reef rather than a coral dominated reef. Gotcha. How are things looking out here? Fairly healthy? Recovering? Looking okay? Uh, yeah, we have good years and bad years. I okay. mean, we uh, we had uh, some pretty bad bleaching uh, towards the end of last year. Yeah. Um, and we do, we're currently not here on St. Croix, thankfully. Um, but the uh, U.S. Virgin Islands and St. Thomas and St. John uh, are yep. facing a pretty severe threat from the stony coral tissue loss disease, right. um, which has been sort of running rampant in, in Flor on the Florida reef tract yep. since 2014 and unfortunately is now sort of spreading throughout the Caribbean. So yeah. um, we're trying to keep our reef as healthy as possible, so if that does reach it here, we can sort of... Yeah. Uh, you know, keep keep that resilience. Something I, mean, I, I think, think we're all trying to help keep an eye out for you is, uh, is yes. that disease. We know it's been devastating throughout the Keys and now into the Caribbean. So yes, got, yeah, so definitely the more eyes we can have on the reef, the better. We do have a website, uh, okay. VI Coral Disease. Uh, you can search for that or search for the Hunt for Coral Disease. Okay. Uh, there's a form you can go on. You can report what you can see, you can upload photos, and that will come straight to our researchers and they'll review those. Cool. Um, check over in case there's anything weird going on. Well, we'll definitely put a link to that in the description below of the video here Fantastic. for everyone to, uh, to check out and so that they can self report. Yeah. Right? That's yep. good. That would be perfect. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, today's uh, cleaning efforts, how, you know, how often do you do that? How often do you keep things clean? So, we try to get out at least once a month. Okay. Um, any longer than that, yeah, it starts getting a little bit. A little bit grimy, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, the longer sure. you leave it, the the harder it is to clean. But also, you know, you start getting those sort of, you don't get so much of the benefits of the nursery, which is the sort of increased rate of growth in the corals. Right. What about top line predators? You know, the 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 sharks out there and stuff. We know that this is a protected area, and uh, and that the sharks, as well as everything else, is protected. Yeah. Do you, do you, what impact do you see like the top line predators having on the reef? So uh, that's a really good question. So I mean, coral reef uh, food webs are like very complex and complicated, but a sort of simplified way of looking at it would be so your sharks are going to be feeding on, uh, you know, as you say, there's sort of apex predators on the yeah. reef. And then below those you have what's called like the, the meso predators. So that's like your groupers and things like that, which are then going to be feeding on your herbivorous fish. Okay. So if you lose all of your apex predators, then you can get an increase actually in your, your meso predators, your snappers and your groupers. And those in turn can also keep your herbivore populations down or uh, what they can also do is just affect the behavior of the herbivores where they're not so willing to sort of go out and graze on the reef because there's an increased abundance of these sort of middle level predators. So right. it does become very complicated as you really delve into it, but yep. that's a, a, a 
short version of the sh it. <laughs> short and simplified. You know, it's keeping a healthy balance of those yes. top line spreaders really even helps everything all the way down to the corals and yes. the health of the, the reef itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, if there's a, you know, anybody that was interested in either volunteering with the East End Marine Park or, you know, uh, you know what, uh, what do people need to do to get involved or be, what should they be aware of? Okay, so uh, most of our volunteers uh, come through a, a group we have that works with us called the Friends of St. Croix East End Marine Park. Okay. Um, if you Google that, uh, just put that into Facebook, we do have a Facebook group. Okay. Uh, you can join. But the, the Facebook group is usually the, a pretty good way to keep up to date with our events, and yep. we usually post most, most of our activities on there. Cool. Well, we'll include all that information below in the description for anybody that uh, might be interested in either volunteering or just learning a little bit more about what goes on here at the East End Marine Park. One more question for you. So, you know, as, a, as you're managing the, the park out here, and we've got Bus Buck Island National uh, monument out there. Um, mm -hmm. This is a nice protected area of St. Croix. What are your thoughts on you know other areas in the world? Should is what you're seeing here working, and should the model of protected reef areas you know kind of be extended to other parts of the world? Certainly, uh, there. I mean, certainly there is not enough of the ocean that is protected at the moment. Yeah. Uh, scientists uh, have. Have, a, have come out with a goal recently of, of 30% by 2030, uh, which I think is a really nice... 30 sort of by 30? Yeah, yep. 30 by 30, yeah. So a nice, real nice target to aim for. Um, I mean, obviously there's, there's so much pressure on the oceans these days, uh, not just coral reefs, you know, there's, there's overfishing, there's pollution, there's, there's climate change, and all of these different uh, things that are just negatively affecting our oceans, and uh, it's really important that we sort of give uh, some areas these levels of protection to allow the natural environment to recover, you know, allow yeah. fish stocks and uh, and that will actually, you know, benefit areas outside of those protective areas. I mean, right. as we all know, fish don't stay in one place, yeah. they do swim around. <laughs> they don't recognize uh, the protected boundaries at all. Exactly. Areas, so. <laughs> uh, so if you can, you know, provide an area where they can be safe and protected and, and reproduce, then, you know, once their populations start to increase, they'll spread outside of those areas and um, you know, we should start seeing those benefits outside of the protected areas too. So that's and it's so it's really important to have more protected areas and also a network of protected areas yeah. where fish can sort of move and, and 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 other animals. You know, turtles and sharks and marine mammals can move sort of in between these protected areas. Yeah. Well, great. Well, Matt, thanks again for uh, diving with us and having us out with you. It was fantastic kind of learning a little bit more about what you're doing here at the East End Marine Park with uh, regards to coral restoration and, and the protected area itself. So thank you very much. Really appreciate it. No problem at all. Yeah, my yeah. pleasure. Thank awesome. you for joining us. Absolutely. Um, we'll, we're looking forward to another dive again soon. But yeah. uh, if you guys uh, enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that little bell so you're notified on every dive that we do. Uh, but until next time, be safe and have fun diving. Thanks, Matt. All right.